one of these clubs behind me is leaving my bag, maybe forever. I'm sick of it. It's getting replaced. Let's do it. On today's video, we are putting a new club in the bag, this beautiful SM8 from Vokey. This is a 50 degree wedge, which means I've got to take something out of this bag behind me. So I'm going to take you through my decision making process, what goes into my thinking about which clubs are going to be in my bag and why. And we're going to talk about gapping and the importance of having the right gapping when it comes to wedges as well as the rest of the clubs in your bag. So I'm gonna take you through my bag first. You'll know which clubs I have in my bag and how far I hit those clubs. So first off, I've got the Epic Driver. This is the original Epic, not the Epic Flash or anything, but the Epic Driver. First club I ever bought for $500, by the way. Never spent that much money on one single golf club, but I'll tell you what, it paid dividends because this club added 20 yards to my drive. So I hit this driver about 250 yards, that's an average. It could be anywhere from 240 to 270, but on average about 250. I've got an older Callaway X-Hot. Have you ever seen one of these? X-Hot 3-Wood. I actually looked into replacing the 3-Wood, but I still can't find anything that matches the distance and accuracy for my game. So I keep this club, it's like 12, 15 years old now, but I love it. Now I hit my 3-Wood 225. In my hodgepodge of a bag, I carry this beautiful C300 from Wilson. It's like a three iron hybrid club. In fact, I set it at, let's see, minus one, and this is 20 degrees, so this is now set to 19 degrees. This club I hit about 215, 210, somewhere in that area. Uh, but again, very, very accurate with this club. It's probably my, my go-to club in my bag. It's like, I call it the money maker. So again, 250 for the driver, 225 for the three wood. Let's say 215 for the hybrid. Now the next club in my bag is a three iron. This is the MP20 HMB from Mizuno. Beautiful, beautiful clubs. A little bit of a, it's not a cavity, it looks like a blade, but there's really a cavity inside of there. It's in fact hollow inside these clubs, and so it makes especially these long irons really easy to hit. I love these clubs. All right, now let's take a look at my MP20 set, and you should do this with any set of golf clubs you have. The manufacturer will supply those specifications. It's a quick Google search way, but it's really important to know the lofts of your club, and so you'll have a little chart like you're seeing here on the screen. This set can potentially have a two iron, which I do not have. So I have three through pitching wedge. The three iron of this MP20 HMB is at 19 degrees. And I just now realized that I'm carrying two clubs in my bag that are 19 degrees. I've got both the three iron and my hybrid, which is a 20 degree club turned down one degree. You can set that on the shaft, it's an adjustment. And I've got two clubs in my bag at 19 degrees. I will say I do hit the hybrid further it's because it's a hybrid club. It's a little bit of a further club. It's about 10 more yards. I get 215 out of my hybrid, about 205 out of the three iron. So even though they're the same degree, there is a difference there. The four iron in this set is a 22 degree loft. The five iron there is at 25 degrees, six iron at 28 degrees, seven at 32 degrees, the eight irons at 36 degrees and the nine irons at 41 degrees. Now I realize there's a little bit of a bigger gap there. You'll see a lot of those clubs are between three and four degrees. And the, between my eight and my nine, there's actually a five degree gapping difference there, which is why I've been coming up a little bit short with my nine iron. Now I understand because there's a full five degree difference there. So I'm not getting my 10 yard gapping. I'm getting like 12 to 15 yards difference there. I hit my eight iron about 145 and I hit my nine iron. What I thought was 135, but I kept coming up short. It was about 132, 130, 132, something like that. So that makes a lot of sense there. And my pitching wedge also has that five degree gapping. So I've got 41 degrees on the nine iron and 46 degrees on the pitching wedge, which is why I've been hitting my pitching wedge about 120, not 125 like I thought. So it's oftentimes worth going through this guys to see what your set is like, because each set's a little bit different. Now the, the wedges in my bag that I currently carry are a 54, 
I've got a 54 right here, and you actually saw me buy these clubs on my other video when I went wedge shopping and I looked at every wedge on the market. I settled on the Titleist SM8, so I'll put the link to that video right here. But I love these clubs, and I used to carry a 56 and a 60. I changed when I bought these new clubs to a 54, and in case you're wondering, I have the D grind, 54 D grind from, from the Vokey line and 58 so i changed from 56 60 to 54 58 so basically this is my 95 yard club 90 95 yard club and my 58 degree which if you're watching at home and caring it's an m grind from Voki. my 58 is like my 65 yard club maybe 75 if i really go after it so 75 let's say 90 and then my pitching wedge 125. What that means is I've got a giant gap between 46 degrees at my pitching wedge up to 54 degrees where my sand wedge starts. I've basically got 30 yards difference. So when I've got to hit a 100 yard shot, what I've ended up finding myself doing is I've got to take an 80% swing with my pitching wedge or maybe 85% with my pitching wedge and I just can't get accurate enough. So we're making a big change here in adding a new wedge. As you can see, beautiful unwrapped. We'll actually unwrap this right here together. But this is my matching Vokey. This is the F grind and it's got uh, eight degrees of bounce on it. It matches my other wedges as you can see there. And this is going to fill the gap. So this club for me is about a 110 yard club. So now I've got a perfect gapping situation where I hit my pitching wedge at 125. I now hit my 50 at around 110, something like that. And I've got my 54 degree sand wedge here, which I'm going to hit about give or take 90 yards. So that's the perfect gapping scenario. Now, when that happens, you can't be carrying 15 clubs in your bag. As you know, you got to keep it at 14. That means something has got to go. I've been thinking about losing the three wood and here's why. We took a look in another video at the shot scope data where they say that it never pays to hit a three wood off the tee. It's only a 1% difference of hitting the fairway with the three wood than the driver and so it always makes sense to go with the driver. All right, so three wood is definitely on the table. You could put three hybrid on the table here, but again, with my comfort level, this is my favorite club in my bag, and I just cannot see that going away. But if it was, we've got the three iron. Now this is another likely candidate to leave my bag because right now I've got two 19 degree clubs and I hit this one a heck of a lot better. Now this is useful. I use the three iron if I'm in some heavy rough the three iron can come in handy because it can get through the rough a little bit better. But in most situations, I'd say 98% of the time, if I'm pulling out a club, it's going to be this one. If I'm in the sand trap, if I need to hit it low under a tree, I'm pulling out this hybrid. So I don't see why I'd keep the three iron in that case. So now we're down to two options. And here's where I need your help, guys. I would love for you to leave a comment below and let me know what you would do if you were in my situation. Would you take the three iron out of your bag? Or would you take the three wood out of your bag? So right now my decision is to remove the three iron, but I would love to know if you think I'm making a mistake and I can always add it back in later. Now I'm gonna have a gap between 215 and my four iron, which is 185. But I think that I can control this a little bit better, take a little bit off of this club. But as you can see, there's always that balance. It's going to be very, very rare that you have the perfect gapping throughout your bag. So at some point, you're going to have to make a similar decision to what I'm making. Either you're going to get the proper gapping in your wedges, or you're going to have to do it somewhere else in the bag because there's just not enough clubs in a bag to cover all of those lofts. And I'm making the decision to do it with my lower lofted clubs again because I think those are the scoring clubs and I need those distances really, really pinpoint accurate when I'm 125 yards and in. In the end, I'm gonna be hitting a lot more of those shots than shots where I'm gonna need that three iron 
or the three hybrid. And so that's where it's going to make the biggest difference for my game. So hopefully you enjoyed this episode of Let's Play 3. You got a little bit of a taste of what's in my bag. So we covered both areas and maybe you learned something about gapping. I hope you hit subscribe because we're dropping videos twice weekly on this channel. Sundays are generally golf tech reviews. We're unboxing gear, talking about gear like we're doing here. Wednesdays we do golf travel vlogs all over the world, all over the United States. So hope you keep coming back here each and every week. I'll catch you back here next time on another edition of Let's Play through.